As we go to God in prayer, let us acknowledge our need to, to restore, to repair, to renew our holy vessels so that we might be able to create and imagine new possibilities, new solutions. Let us pray. Oh, great God of all possibilities, you make us in your image and you have tasked us to be co-creators of a better world. You have bestowed imagination and the ability to learn on us, but we are tired. And our energy wanes and our enthusiasm wanes. Oh God, in this past year, the, the call for ideas and solutions and workarounds and adaptations has been nonstop for us all whether we're needing to find ways to keep children engaged and well, or figuring out how to maintain a, a passion for our work in the midst of trying times, or needing desperately to undo systems of oppression too long affecting our lives and the lives of our neighbors. Not only our livelihoods, but our liveliness is at stake. And too often, we, want to, we just want to give up. We want to say, this is, this is too hard. And we just want to isolate and wait for uh, a time of uh, better days. Oh God, sometimes it just all feels overwhelming. And so we look away. Sometimes even from the need in our own community. Help us, healing God. Show us our deep energy reserves in you. Forgive our cynicism. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this time of silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Let 
this be our peace. I invite you to open your eyes. The peace of Christ is with you and also with you. Today our opening song this morning is a reminding to say. Breath of God in our lungs, and our bodies need the 
oxygen, but our souls need that breath of God working to heal us from the inside out. So let's keep, keep breathing, keep doing that. Um, and I want to talk just for a little bit about what it means to, to be safe. Here we are in the sanctuary. Um, and, you know, sanctuary doesn't really mean that churchy place with pews and um, it, it means a safe place. And there are all kinds of sanctuaries. You might have gone to the World, the World Bird Sanctuary or um, heard of the Wolf Sanctuary. And um, it's a place where those kind of animals are safe from, from predators. And, and um, there's an elephant sanctuary in Tennessee. It's a safe place for, for retired circus elephants to live and, and to be safe. So a church sanctuary is any place where God's people can feel and name all the feelings that life brings. Did you ever think about that? You're not here just to sit quietly in a pew and, and, and have me or somebody read scripture and, and say a few words. Um, it's, a, it's a place to connect with God, to feel safe, to express the feelings. And boy, this year has brought up a lot of different kind of feelings for us. Um, we have tried to keep this place as safe as possible, so for a while we had online worship only, and now that we have kind of a hybrid, we have people watching at home, and we have people here, everybody's wearing masks and keeping their distance, we're sanitizing, we're still doing all those things. Oh. And um, Hudson's got to take a break. Um, there's, a, there's a, a way that um, maybe when we're at home and we're feeling kind of stressed out or anxious that we might need some sanctuary there. And here's an easy one. I brought, um, this is a, a prayer shawl, but if you have a shawl or a blanket or anything like that at home, that will do. And this one is a really special one made by a friend for me. Um, and if you're looking, you can see that we've got an array of prayer shawls up here on the railing. So, um, I mean, this, wrapping this around my shoulders not only provides warmth, but a sense of comfort, security, and I, I think about the prayers that my friend meant into this one. Um, and it's soft. Sometimes we just need something soft and, and cuddly. Kids know this best of all. Um, so I'm going to just invite you to, to um, think of, of if you have a blanket or something like that at home, to think of that as your kind of sanctuary. And if you need one, friends, we have all kinds of different colors and textures up here, and I will just invite you to take one to realize that these prayer shawls were knit with love. And um, maybe you have one, but you know of a friend that could use one. Take, take that for your friend. Um, so I'm going to say a special prayer for our blankets right now. And I'll invite you to repeat after me. Loving God, please bless these blankets and prayer shawls so that whenever we wear them, we can feel the warmth of your love. We can feel the healing touch of your hands. And we can feel safe to be our truest selves. Amen. So friends watching at home, I hope you grabbed your special blanket while we were doing that. Um, and again, I'll just offer that you can come up after the worship service and, and choose one. Really, I found that when I'm choosing one, it often chooses me. And so you, you'll be drawn to a particular one. So I invite you to do that. Now, as we listen to our special music, you'll notice on the screen some, uh, some quotes, some contemporary words that kind of set the, the healing theme for this week. Okay, our special this morning is uh, uh, Vessels. It's a song written by Chris Sly a long time ago. One of the, he was on American Idol. But, uh, it, I mean, the, the root verse that it kind of came from is, you know, where the the potter and the broken pots and the potter can, master potter can remake something with these things. But also it talks about, you know, God just working with us and continuing to mold us. Time, we've gone through tough times for a whole year now. And uh, God is
is still working to pick up our broken pieces and make us a perfect vessel. So hope you enjoy it. with his disciples. 
And then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and, and touched the fringe of his cloak. She said to herself, if I just touch his cloak, I will be made well. And Jesus turned and saw her and he said, take heart, my daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the synagogue leader's house, he saw the flute players that were there uh, for, the, for the mourners and the, the crowd making a commotion. And he said, go away. This girl is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him. But when the crowd of people had been put outside the house, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. The report of this spread throughout that whole district. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A year ago this week, the World Health Organization announced that the SARS virus, known as COVID-19, was a global pandemic, and the season of shutdowns began. This church, Faith United Methodist Church, held our last in-person worship service on March 15, 2020, and then we pivoted to be online only for three months. Uh, we were able to open for a time in the summer last year, and then we, we uh, went back to online only in November until just a few weeks ago. So uh, it's been a year of, uh, I think pivot is the word that I kept hearing over and over again as we change and we, we try to think through uh, what was unthinkable. We never experienced a global pandemic before. So how do we know what to do? Um, this week, the media has encouraged us to look back in our smartphones at, at the pictures that we took a year ago. And someone say these were the last pictures of our so-called normal life. Um, so I've seen people sharing pictures of birthday parties and spring training and concerts and uh, fun times with family and friends just crowded around and we didn't think anything about that um, to be up close with people and at that time we didn't know how our lives would change or, or how we would be affected and some things are still surprising me like the, the shortage of toilet paper and soap all of a sudden it was just gone uh, kids miss school for a little while like spring break and then that just extended to at home learning uh, and people <coughs> learn to work from home despite a lot of distractions like kids trying to do at home learning right um, the overall mood was one of grief and uncertainty. And I'm, I know that I'm not telling you anything new, but sometimes it is just good to, to uh, talk about these things. And people began to be ill, sometimes dangerously ill, sometimes dying. And I noticed the progression as the year went on. At first it was like friends of friends of friends who got COVID. And then it was friends of friends. And then it was people that we knew and sometimes in our own family or ourselves. Um, many of us have been praying for Pastor David Fitzmaurice for months now. Uh, as he and his wife Patty both got COVID, but he had a much more severe case than she did. You just, you don't, we don't know. It's part of the uncertainty. And uh, a year ago, yesterday, Brianna Taylor was unjustly shot and killed while she was sleeping in her own home. It's been a year of grief. A year of firsts. And I know the COVID-19 pandemic is not over yet. 
And, and it does feel kind of strange to be recounting all the changes that we've experienced. I, I just touched on a few of them. And yet, a year is long enough to realize just how hard this collective journey has been. For many people, anxiety and loneliness have been heightened as we focus on all the things that we're missing. Hugs, family get-togethers, grocery shopping, graduations, and other milestones. And so that's the reason for this healing series. We desperately need to experience healing. Come, Lord Jesus, come. So today, we heard two stories of Jesus' healing. And, and there's a familiarity to these healing stories by now. Um, we, we know that Jesus heals by touch. I think every story that I've read every week, Jesus touches the person. He touches the leper or others that are considered unclean. Uh, so that, that, that physical touch is important. And we hear over and over again that faith can make us well. But uh, this narrative from the Gospel of Matthew today, it, it's kind of distinct. It has some differences in it. For, for example, this is the only account that Matthew tells of a person being revived from being dead. Jesus has the power to heal from illness and has the power to overcome death itself. Now, um, this narrative is also told in the Gospel of Mark and in Luke, and they, they tell it different ways there. Um, but this is the only one in Matthew. And then, then um, that, that revival story is, it, I, friends, I can't help but I think of it like a taco. And then right there in the center of that taco is this healing story of, of this the woman that was bleeding for 12 years. So it's you know, this story is wrapped around that one. And, and so think about this. The characters of these two stories are quite different. In, in the one, is a powerful man, the leader of the synagogue. Other Gospels tell us his name was Jairus. Matthew doesn't say that. But think of it. Um, he just comes in and he, and he interrupts Jesus' dinner and, and made a request for help. He says, come to my house. And Jesus uh, gets up and, and goes with him. And then the disciples go with him. Um, and then this other story, this woman who's just on the outside, she merely reaches for Jesus' cloak as he passes by. She was so certain of this kind of healing, she... She wasn't even asking Jesus to touch her, but just if she could just touch uh, his clothing, that somehow that healing power would, would flow out. And, and Jesus experiences that. He feels that. He feels that power go out from him. I think that we can assume that Jesus and the man, Jairus, the synagogue leader, spoke at some point, though Matthew doesn't tell us what words they exchanged. Um, but the Gospel does tell us Jesus' words to this woman. He, he turns, he, he speaks to her, he touches her, he heals her. So this story about being resurrected is, is interrupted by and interpreted through the story of being saved. This woman had suffered for 12 years years with a hemorrhage, uh, 12 years of being considered unclean, and she was desperate. Can you think of something in your life that you have been praying to God for for a long time, some kind of healing, some kind of malady that you have been suffering with, or a family member has been suffering, and you just feel desperate? You know, in our times of desperation, we don't have to, to
to worry about what is the correct way to approach God. What's the correct way to pray? What are the correct words to use or the actions to take? Like this woman, we can simply reach out in faith. God will respond. See, God changed a situation that had been a problem for years. This woman was considered untouchable. She had not been able to lead a normal life for 12 years. We get a little flavor of that because we haven't led a normal life for 12 months. So for 12 years she'd been seeking healing, going from doctor to doctor, trying all sorts of, of healing things. She didn't lose faith. Finally, 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 she put her faith in this man called Jesus who came as God. And Jesus restored her. You know, sometimes we are tempted to give up on people or situations that, that have not changed for many years. Sometimes we are so tempted to give up. Think of this, friends. God can take what seems like an unchangeable situation, an unchangeable suffering, and give us new hope and purpose. So these stories of, of the daughter and of, of the synagogue leader and this woman that are connected to the saving story of Jesus' death and resurrection. It tells us that these images of death and destruction don't have the last word. When we have been suffering for a while, when we have been anxious and isolated and all the things that we've experienced in this year, it can feel impossible to imagine that we might emerge with new life, with vigor and creativity in these exhausting times. But I'll tell you, friends, creativity can also happen when we must prune and cut out and cull and prioritize because we are exhausted. Here's a question. What things have we been holding on to in our lives or in our church because we've always done it this way?
I have some folks that come every month, some folks that, that come uh, when they can. So that's quite a number of us. That's a new way of feeding people that came about because of COVID-19 pandemic. Think of this, in what ways is Jesus calling us to new life? In this season of recovery, friends, I got my shot Wednesday. So uh, I know many of you take, tell me every week, I got my shot, I got my second shot, things like that. Um, so this is, we'll call this a season of recovery. We're not out of this yet by any means, but we can see that things are, are changing a bit. What is being reawakened in us and in our community? What is being saved and for what purpose? What are we going to do with our newfound healing? Every week I get up here and I talk, I share healing stories and I talk about the healing that God wants to affect in our lives. What are we going to do with that? What will we leave behind and what will we bring with us as we go forward on this journey? Another good thing that's come out of this uh, time of the pandemic is our relationship with the preschool. Now, we always had one, and it's been growing closer and closer. Um, but we've, the preschool has had to, to pivot along with the church and do some things in a new way. Um, so they can't do their, their traditional mom's night or dad's night. Um, they're going to do an art show. And uh, this will be April the 24th, and they've invited the church to participate with them. Now, you'll hear more about this as time goes by, but I wanted to, to give you a little flavor of that because we are invited to participate in this art show. So if you have something that you have created, the theme is kind of where do we see God? And maybe you take a photograph of a flower and you see God's beauty in that. Maybe you create something like these beautiful prayer shawls. Maybe you draw or do something with clay or, or uh, Play-Doh even. Um, all, I'm not going to limit these expressions of creativity. We're invited to, to participate in this art show with our preschool. It'll be April 24th, so just keep that in mind and be thinking about where do I see God? How do I express the creative gift that God has given me? It looks different for everybody. Just to return to our story, you know, every week we look at the reaction of the crowd in the story. There's always a crowd of people around Jesus and the individual that he's healing. And so this week, there was an interesting reaction at Jesus' notion that that girl was not dead. Do you remember it? What did the crowd do? Laugh. I heard some of you laugh when I read that part of the scripture. It, it touches our funny bone to think somebody laughed at Jesus. <gasps> so um, what was going on there? They had mourners. They had, they, they had flute players. That's part of their, their uh, funeral procession. All of that stuff was going on. And yet Jesus said, this is not the end of this story. The idea that we could come back to life better than before, that we could find some way to bring life back to what feels dead, and it might seem preposterous to some at this point. It might seem laughable. But like Jesus, we don't need to let that deter us. Jesus didn't let them stop or slow them down. Can we forge ahead and enter that house of sorrow and dare to declare Proclaim that life can still exist. The words of Jesus that, that we highlight this week from that healing story is, the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And if you paid attention to those quotes that were scrolling on the screen earlier, um, a lot of them had to do with uh, awakening or, being, or waking up. So we've touched today on our need to be rejuvenated in spirit, to, to awaken with new vigor for creativity, curiosity. This is intellectual healing. It's also a spiritual healing. Because we might feel that 
We have been slowly dying away these last few months. But Jesus affirms that we are not dying. Perhaps we are sleeping. It's the healing that we yearn for, to be awakened, to brought back to life with vitality and vigor for the days ahead. So, I said earlier that this time can, can, can kind of limit our creativity. Um, every week I invite you to do something with the, the um, bag of materials that, that we sent home in our linen uh, bags that um, was bits of glass and things. So, um, this week I invite you to take them all out of the bowl or the bag, wherever they might be, and just kind of play with them. Be creative. Uh, imagine yourself as a mosaic artist rearranging. And um, there, here's my example. I, I put them on a plate um, and then just kind of made a pleasing arrangement. I might go home and mess that whole thing up and, and, and create something new, but I wanted you to get the idea. And friends, I do invite you to do this and then um, to take a picture of it, just as I did. You can, you can email that or send that to me. You can email it to the church. Um, and we might feature it uh, in future. It would be really cool to see how we've taken these broken pieces and created something new out of it. <sighs> Friends, in our healing stories today, people open their lives to Jesus. And so we are drawn to the healer, opening our hearts with honesty about our lives and about finding assurance that offers peace. Even when we don't see a way, we can have faith that God is always working, making a way, healing and restoring, creating and changing. And Jesus spoke a blessing to that woman who reached out to him. And I'm going to speak it to you now. Jesus turned and saw her and said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. Take heart. And friends, if you say this to yourself, just put your name right in there. Take heart. Take heart. Your faith has made you well. Amen. Especially voices that have been silenced. 
And we give thanks for the courage of people who use their resources and their creativity to make more good in the world. And we ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can join this effort. We pray this day for all those who are seeking healing, especially those suffering from the effects of COVID-19. We pray for their doctors and nurses and, and caregivers. We pray for those who are weary, for our mamas and daddies, for our teachers, for every worker who's been affected by this, and for every kid who's trying to figure out how to learn in the midst of a pandemic. God, you know the prayers of our hearts, and we lift them to you now. And we offer this prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing song is one of my favorites. Be thou my vision.